What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I Graham Gs and Matthews break down all the original content they watch on the WWE Network. Today, we're talking the SummerSlam 2020 edition of WWE The Day Of. Another great episode, this one solely focusing on Dominic Mysterio, Rey Mysterio as Dominic prepares to face Seth Rollins on the show, and Mandy Rose versus Sonya Deville. Uh, we don't really hear, I don't think we hear from Mandy at all. I think it's mostly, if not entirely, Sonya, which is cool. Um, especially now knowing that we're not going to be seeing Sonya for a while, coming off the loss where she was fired, quote-unquote, from WWE, merely taking time off. She will be back. Um, but I thought this episode was really, really good. Clocks in at 22 minutes long. And we just had a day of a couple of weeks ago on SummerSlam 2015, which was equally enjoyable. I was at that show. Um, not at this one. I was supposed to be due to the uh, COVID circumstances. I couldn't, obviously. Um, but still, it was a lot of fun to watch. So the first thing that we see is Dominic Mysterio packing his gear for the first time. And he talks about how he didn't expect such a quick start to his wrestling career. He, he thought he would move to Florida, train for a little while, maybe go through the NXT ranks, which ultimately probably is what should happen. I know he's been kind of thrust into the spotlight, uh, thrown right into the fire from the get-go in this feud with Rollins, which has been awesome. But at a certain point, I feel like people might start to realize, okay, he does need more seasoning, and he should probably go to NXT first, Developmental Performance Center, whatever, before getting a real run on Raw. Because so far, so good. But it's going to reach a certain point where I feel like he will need more development before he goes any further in his career. So anyway, we do see a quick clip of a 1998 interview. And before we even see the clip of the interview, it's with Rey Mysterio, obviously, but before we even see the interview, you hear the interviewer asking Ray, would you be willing to pass down your mask to your future son? I think his son, obviously, by that point, had probably, obviously, had already been born, because right now he would be, I don't know, actually. Dominic, isn't he 22 years old? So he was probably, he must have been already born by that point. If he wasn't, he was about to be born. Um, but nonetheless, so before we even see the clip, you hear the interviewer, and I'm like, why do I know who that is? And I'm thinking, and I thought it was like a recent clip because they never really show old clips like this on uh, on this show. And I'm like, that's not Jeremy Borash or whoever. Who is that guy? And then I realized as soon as I realized it was a 1998 interview, not a recent interview, it was Mike Tanay because it was from WCW. I thought that was great. So a rare Mike Tanay appearance on the WWE Network, although we do have all those old Nitros, but that's besides the point. Uh, Ray says that he would love to keep his son, uh, you know, not to keep his son, obviously he wants to keep his son, but he wants his son to keep the Ray Mysterio name going, to keep that legacy alive. We then go back to Dominic, who's back in his hotel room packing and, you know, the gear and whatnot. He does say that it was something that his father didn't force him to do. It wasn't something that his father pushed him to do, forced him to do whatever. It was something he wanted to do. Dominic grew up watching his father, and he always wanted to be a wrestler. He recalls Rey Mysterio making his WWE pay-per-view debut at SummerSlam of the 2002 installment, facing Kurt Angle. Um, he said he watched that match the night before, before going to bed, to do some last-minute tape watching, which was cool. He does say, I wish Eddie was here. And uh, he doesn't get emotional, he doesn't cry or anything like that. Um, but it was really sad to hear that, knowing that if Eddie was here, he obviously would have been really proud. He talks more about Eddie as uh, as we went along here, which was really nice. So we then hear from Sonya Deville, and the first thing that she says is that something happened recently, without directly acknowledging what happened, which we all know by this point what happened with the whole um, the intruder and whatnot, and, and how scary that situation. It was. It's already scary, but it could have been ten times worse had she not gotten the hell out of there. But she said, had things gone as they were supposed to, had she not gotten out of her house, essentially, that would have prevented her from being at SummerSlam. That would have, uh, you know, thrown off this match that she has been working so hard to get. She has fought for this match with Mandy Rose on screen and behind the scenes for a long time. Her and, her and Mandy go way back, obviously. She mentions that. But had things prevented that match from happening, obviously, who cares about a wrestling match? Uh, but who knows what would have happened? Would, would Sonya have? I don't know. I'm not even going to begin to speculate. But she does bring up how everything happens for a reason. And because everything kind of worked out the way that it did, we are getting that match now at SummerSlam, which is cool. 
And we actually do hear from Mandy. I wrote that down in my notes here. I completely forgot about this. We don't hear from her a lot, but she does bring up how this moment is going to mean a lot to her. And she's ready to go out there and kick butt because of the history that they share dating back to their tough in it days five years ago. So back to Ray and Dominic. Um, we see clips of Eddie Guerrero with Dominic back in 05 during the Eddie and Dominic and Ray saga from the summer of 2005 on SmackDown. They show the clip of Eddie um, telling Dominic when Dominic was in the ring while Ray tried to stop Eddie that Eddie was Dominic's father, uh, which obviously he's not. But Dominic recalls all those memories with Eddie and filming the vignettes and spending time with him um, and how Eddie would always come over to his house and hang out and how... Eddie never wanted to stay over, but Eddie, or uh, rather Dominic's mom, Ray's wife, kind of forced him to stay over, uh, just being very, you know, showing that hostility, not hostility, the hospitality of keeping Eddie over at the house and having him spend time with the kids and just to relax and whatnot, and Eddie would kind of feel like he was intruding by doing that, but they made him feel at home always, Uh, and he knows that Eddie would be proud now knowing that he's making his pay-per-view in-ring debut, Dominic is. At SummerSlam, the same pay-per-view him and Ray fought at in 2005 and the same pay-per-view that Ray had his SummerSlam debut at his WWE pay-per-view debut in 2002. So back to Sonya, that she recalls her journey with Mandy Rose to this point, dating back to their Tough Enough days. She saw Mandy Rose on the second floor of the Performance Center during the whole Tough Enough tryouts. She thought she looked like a Barbie doll, so obviously she's judging her at first sight, and she's thinking she's not going to like her, she's going to be fake, she's, they're going to be like enemies and whatnot, whatever. So she went up to her to introduce herself, and she was surprised at how she sounded and how cool she was. So they hit it off right from the get-go because of where they were, because I think Mandy grew up in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Sonya were, uh, grew up in New Jersey, I'm pretty sure as well. So they kind of had similarities in that respect. They got along, they locked. They liked a lot of the same stuff. They were friends pretty much from the get-go. They became roommates after a while, then they became neighbors. I'm not sure if they still are. They might still be today, I don't know, but um, they were roommates at one point, which is cool. So we go back to the Mysterios, and we see the Mysterios entering the Thunderdome. They're in awe of this giant arena that's going to be hosting Dominic versus Seth on this show. We hear from SmackDown ring announcer Greg Hamilton, which is incredibly random, but he does say that fans grew up watching Dominic and how we've kind of seen Dominic grow up from where he was as a kid in 2005. He was on SmackDown in 2010. We saw him on WWE TV last year, and now he's ready to enter the ring, which is really, really cool. Uh, We hear from Dominic's mom, Angie, who mentioned that she could not watch her son's beating when he endured all those kendo uh, kendo stick shots on Raw a couple of weeks ago. She must have been there or watching at home or whatever. I'm pretty sure she was there when it happened. And she was sitting there watching it. And at a certain point, she just couldn't take it anymore. She just got up and walked away. She, well, I mean, what mother would want to watch their son get the shit kicked out of him with a kendo stick? Ray was proud. Obviously, he was concerned for his safety, but he was mostly proud being a wrestler himself. And Dominic looked at it as an initiation of sorts. And he passed with flying colors. So we also hear from Dominic, who talks about how his cuts reopened soon after the fact, and that was just terrible. And he also shows off his gear, and how a little part of his gear, like the inside lining or something, was from the same gear or the same mask that Ray was wearing the night that he was unmasked by Kevin Ash and WCW 20 years ago or whatever it was, which was um, cool. And he's wearing blue gear because blue is his favorite color. Uh, Dominic, that is. He also says right before he goes out that he's confident in his abilities and that he's ready to rock this thing. So we hear from Sonya before the match. She's hyping herself up, really excited for the match. They recap it, and we hear from her afterwards, and she says that she and Mandy really wanted to go out there and show that they have that intensity and that they're not green, that they are willing to bring it, prove the people wrong, prove the detractors wrong, and prove that they are capable of having a great match. And they did. It wasn't picture perfect by any means. It wasn't flawless in the ring. Um, But it was a great story and very entertaining. It was a very hard-hitting, aggressive match. They went out there to bust their ass, uh, to show that they busted their ass to get here, to this point in their WWE careers, and she feels they succeeded. We then see Dominic versus Seth Rollins, which was a great match. Um, Probably one of, if not the best match from the pay-per-view. They recapped that and everything that happened. So obviously Dominic loses. He walks to the back with Ray. There is this massive standing. There's this massive standing ovation for Dominic as soon as he walks back through the curtain. 
We see Jamie Noble congratulate him. We hear, uh, we see Bruce Pritchard congratulate him. He also goes up to Vince to go hug Vince, okay? And this I thought was a really, really cool moment. You could say what you will about Vince and whatever, but I thought this was cool. So Vince is hugging him and whatnot, and he tells Dominic, there is very few people in this business, regardless of how long they've been there, in, in the business, and have been in WWE, whatever, that get that type of reaction when they come through that curtain. And you managed to do that on day one. So you should be very proud of yourself. I thought that was cool. Uh, we then hear from Ray, who says the real pressure is on now, that we know what he's capable of, we know his potential. But now it's time to go out there and kill it. Now it's time to go out there and make this thing happen, continue to build on it, continue to improve, and you know, just hope he doesn't get hurt or whatever. You know, Which is ironic, because Ray was actually the one that got hurt in their most recent tag team match at Bayback, but that's another story for another day. Hopefully Dominic is not nearly as injury-prone as his father. Ray gets hurt every other week. The guy blows his nose and he, you know, hurts his back or whatever. The guy gets hurt constantly. Um, but another another cool moment from this documentary was when we saw Dominic backstage with Ray and the referee came for the match came up to him and he said, hey, Rollins wanted me to give you this. It was his wristband or both of them, whatever. So we actually let Dominic keep his wristbands as like kind of a memento of his first match and how good of a job he did, which I thought was awesome. And we actually hear from Rollins as well, who said that he was very proud to have Rey Mysterio's son's first match uh, with the respect that he has for Rey. He thought that was really, really cool. And he wanted to pay homage slash be a dick at the same time by wearing Halloween Havoc inspired tights. The same tights that Rey wore in his match with Eddie from Halloween Havoc 1997. So I thought that was awesome as well. And he hopes that this match with Dominic help puts, you know, helps put Dominic on the map and helps more people take him seriously and that we get to see more from Dominic in the near future. Uh, we see Ray calling his daughter Aaliyah, who we've seen recently on Raw, and Ray calls the whole moment breathtaking. He actually closes out the documentary by saying, we want to go out there and do our best, kind of referring to the performers and whatever, and now it's being passed on, you know, to that next generation and Dominic and whatever. So I thought this was great. This was a great inside look at two of the biggest matches on that SummerSlam card between Mandy and Sonya and largely Rey Mysterio's son Dominic versus Seth Rollins. Two great matches, two great stories to focus on for this episode. Uh, Very, very good stuff. Again, like I said earlier, does clock in at around 22 minutes. Definitely make time to check it out. Um, These behind-the-scenes documentaries are always great. And the WWE Day Of's never disappoint. So check it out right now on the WWE Network, WWE The Day Of, SummerSlam 2020. And thank you guys for checking out this video. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Hit that little bell button as well to be notified every time a new video goes up. And check out more WWE The Day Of reviews in the description box down below. I mean, you can check out all the reviews there as well for all the other episodes of WWE The Day Of I've reviewed over the last year. So until next time, guys, have an awesome one. Enjoy the rest of your week slash weekend, whatever it might be. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.